we'll get started. Come on in, I can see people are joining. Welcome, welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. Feel free to drop a hello to the chat. And welcome, my name is Alexandra and I will be your host for tonight's Getting Started with Web3 DAP Development. Hopefully everyone can hear and see me well. Feel free to drop a hello in the chat. I'm also going to drop a link to the slides for tonight if anyone would like to follow along. All right, let's get into the agenda for tonight. First, we're going to introduce who's on the call. We'll talk about Lumi Wealth, and we'd love to get to know you in the chat as well, those of you watching live on Circle. Then we're going to dive into four teaser topics for our Web3 Masterclass coming this summer. So tonight will be a taste of some of the topics that we will cover in our 10-week course, which starts on June 8th. The course is hands-on, but tonight is more of a bird's eye view of the whole Web3 landscape. We'll talk about what is web development, what are decentralized apps, what is Web3, and how do you build a DAP. And in our 10-week course, we're going to build lots of DAPs together. Towards the end of the night, we'll also have a whole overview of the 10 weeks of the curriculum, talking about exactly what you will cover each week. And if you have any questions throughout the night or at the end of the night, feel free to ask away in the chat. We'd be happy to answer. So let's start with who is on this call. So I encourage you all to type out in the chat, what is your occupation? Do you know how to code? And how much web development and blockchain experience do you have? Maybe you have no experience. Maybe you've invested in some crypto stocks. Maybe you've built a website before. Let us know, even if you're a complete beginner, that is totally fine. Our course is designed to be absolute beginner friendly and so is the webinar. But we want to get to know you and hear who's on the call so we can tailor our webinar for the audience. I can get started. My name is Alexandra Kropova. I'm an instructor here at LumiWealth and a blockchain programmer. I invested in Ethereum back in 2017. And since then, I've taught thousands of students just like you how to build smart contracts and decentralized apps. All right, so we have one message in our chat from Jeremy says zero experience, 110% all in. Awesome, glad to hear your enthusiasm, Jeremy. And it's totally fine that you don't have any experience. Most of my students are in exactly the same boat. They're completely new. All right, feel free to keep chatting away, everyone. Let us know if you are brave enough to. We have John, a grad student in computer science, new to it all. All right, so if you do have some experience in computer science, then that will give you a leg up if you do know some programming topics, because we do a lot of programming in this course, Web3 DAP Development. So if you do have that background in computer science, that will give you a great leg up. All right, thank you, Jeremy and John, for chatting away. Feel free to keep messaging in the chat. Next up, we're going to introduce LumiWealth, our online school. So LumiWealth here, feel free to go to LumiWealth.com if you haven't already to visit our website. We are an online school focused on financial courses, but also getting into the blockchain space. We have courses like trading as a business, crypto trading using algorithms, this course web three using React, algorithmic trading, machine learning, options trading, and blockchain programming. We also have a YouTube channel that I encourage you all to subscribe at, where we post free tutorials as well as webinars just like these. So if you ever miss a webinar, you can watch back. We also put reviews up there by our students. So I've dropped a link in the chat to our YouTube channel. Here you can see we have previous webinars and some tutorials as well. So please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. We also have a Discord channel. So those of you that want to connect with us on Discord, it's completely free. Even if you're not a student, you can still join our Discord. And of course, we also have a Circle community for those of you watching on YouTube lumiwealth.circle.so. Of course, those of you watching live with me on Circle, you already know all about that. All right, so that was our introduction to LumiWealth School. Next up, let's get into our first topic of the night. 
We're going to cover four big topics. Let's start off with web development, building websites in general. So we're not even going to get into web three and dApps just yet. First, let's talk about web development even before there was the blockchain. At the core, websites work with client server communication. The client refers to what your audience will see on the website. They'll see images, buttons, text. They'll see the face of the website. The server is running the website. It's handling all the behind the scenes action. It might have your database where you sto store all your data, like your products or your students. And it's also going to run the communication between all of the users of your site. For example, if someone comes to your store and they buy a product, the server has to handle the purchasing of that product and sending out and the updates to the whole site and to all the other users. So at its core, websites have this communication that is always running. Now, when we introduce Web3 into a website, we add an extra layer into the, usually behind the scenes, the server side of the website. But you can also put Web3 into the front end side of your site, and we'll get more into that later tonight. So this allows us to take an existing website and add an extra layer to it, the blockchain layer. So we can talk to the blockchain like it's smart contracts, or we can use cryptocurrency wallets. Starting off in week one of our summer course, we're going to learn how to build a website. So just a website without even connecting to the blockchain just yet. That will be week two. In week one, we cover these fundamentals. So even if you don't have any experience, you can still take our course because we do dedicate the first week to learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are three main tools that every web developer will start off by learning. HTML is a markup language, so very similar to a coding language that you use to build out all of your page elements. So we'll start off in week one learning how to put together the elements of a website, like an input field, a button, a logo, a menu. We'll learn how to put all of that together. We'll also cover CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is a styling language that you use to add style to the web page. So you might want to add different colors, position your items in different locations, resize your images. You use CSS for that. So these two, HTML and CSS, this is where every web developer begins. So that's why we start our course off with HTML and CSS. Then we bring in JavaScript. JavaScript is the main programming language of this course. We're going to use JavaScript to build all the functionality of our websites and our decentralized websites. JavaScript is the number one programming language for the web. About 99% of websites use JavaScript. So when a web developer starts off their learning journey, they will learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML is like the skeleton to build out the framework of your website. With CSS, you can add style. And then with JavaScript, you can actually implement functionality. If you just have HTML and CSS, you're going to see it in our course that we'll have a website, but it won't be able to do anything. This will be good for something like a landing page or a product page, just a promotional page. But if you want to build a more complex website that has to do something like take in user input or a sign up, sign in, it has to allow purchases of products. But in that case, you have to add functionality to your website. And for that, we use JavaScript. So if you do have coding experience or computer science background, that will give you a great leg up for this course because we're going to cover JavaScript and use it heavily in the course. If you don't have experience, that's totally fine because we will cover key programming topics when we start out with JavaScript. And then each week we build more and more advanced projects that build on your knowledge. But we all start off at the same playing field. So in week one, we start off with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you'll be able to build a website. Then in week two, we're going to immediately add the blockchain layer into our website. So we'll get more into that later on. 
but we'll, we're going to take a regular website and connect it to the blockchain. So we'll already have a dApp in week two. This will be a simple dApp by the end of week two because you've just started off learning how to build websites and how to connect to the blockchain via your website. After we've covered the basics, we're going to build more advanced projects every single week. To build more complex websites and more advanced projects, we're going to need to use a library known as React. So that is next on our list here under what tools do you need to build a website, React.js. React.js is a library, so it is a set of pre-built code that you can use to call and run actions in your website. And you can use JavaScript in order to use the React library. So we're all still using JavaScript. React is a very popular website, not website, but library that is maintained now by Facebook. And with React, we can organize our websites into different components or sections and reuse our code. So if you do want to get a web developer job or build any kind of website that's more complex than just a landing page or a portfolio, if you want to build something more complex, you're going to need to use a library like React. React is the most popular library out there for organizing your website. There are alternatives out there as well, but we chose React for this course because it's the most commonly used. And if you know one of these libraries like React and you master React, then you'll find an easier time picking up other libraries as well if you do want to try out another one or if you get hired at a company that uses a different one. But React is the most popular one. So after week two, we will go into week three where we start with React. And with React, we're going to be able to build more complex websites and decentralized apps. So if you do want to get hired as a Web3 developer or you want to build more complex projects, that is why we are covering React. So these are the four main tools that a web developer will use to build a website. Once we introduce React into our toolkit, we'll then be able to build decentralized apps with React. So we'll be able to build a more complex decentralized app, which means we're connecting to the blockchain. Next up, let's get into what is a DAP because I've already mentioned tonight about how we will build some regular websites and we'll also build some dApps. But what exactly do I mean by a dApp? Because we've all used a regular website. Maybe not all of us have used a dApp before. A dApp stands for decentralized app, which means it's a website or a web app, a piece of software, typically referring to a website that connects to decentralized technology. Decentralized technology refers to the most popular type being blockchain. So technology that allows you to run some kind of operation in a decentralized way where there's no central entity. And if you're interested in learning more about the blockchain itself, we do have a blockchain programming course where we cover all about the blockchain itself. But for now, all you have to know is that the blockchain allows you to build decentralized software. With a dApp, we can connect to the blockchain. So we can build websites that can operate autonomously by connecting to smart contracts. This is the most popular way that you will build a dApp, is building a website that can connect to a smart contract that lives on the blockchain. A smart contract is a contract that lives on the blockchain that operates a set of tasks automatically. So if I go to a smart contract, then I can perform a transaction on the contract and the transaction will happen automatically. It will all happen over the blockchain autonomously. You might have a smart contract for a cryptocurrency. You might have a smart contract for an NFT or a smart contract for an online store, a smart contract for a lending system or giving out loans. In our blockchain programming course, we cover building a whole variety of smart contracts. But in this course, we focus on the front end side. 
meaning building websites that can actually connect to smart contracts. So in our course, we're going to learn how we can connect to these autonomous contracts on the blockchain. We're going to use pre-built smart contracts that I built specifically for the projects in this course. If you're interested in building the smart contracts themselves, then I encourage you to check out our blockchain programming course. That's where we actually build the smart contracts themselves. But some examples of the projects that we're going to build and examples of dApps in general would be an NFT marketplace. If you have a website where users can buy and sell NFTs or non-fungible tokens, this is an example of a DAP because it's connecting to smart contracts. It's a website where people can come and they can buy and sell NFTs. Well, these NFTs, they live on the blockchain. So because that marketplace has connected to the blockchain to be able to display those NFTs and to be able to make the transfers, because the website is connecting to NFTs, it's a dApp. Another example is an NFT minting dApp where you can go to this website and you can mint NFTs. Because the website is creating NFTs, minting them, the minting is done on the blockchain. The website is just the user interface where your audience can come and they can perform these transactions and they can do it over your website instead of going directly to the blockchain because it's more of a user-friendly interface for them. So the whole point of building a dApp is to expand your audience so that anyone who knows how to use a website can now connect to the blockchain. Another example would be a to-do list website where you can put up items that you have to do and then you can check them off when they're done. That's a regular website, but if you want to connect it to the blockchain, you would connect to a smart contract where the smart contract is going to store all of the items to do and the state of the items. Are they done? Are they in progress? When are they due? Are they urgent or are they not urgent? The smart contract will store all of that data and it will update all the data as well. If I have a new to-do item or if I complete a to-do item. The website is like the interface that allows me to interact with the smart contract. So with a website, we can get all the benefits of the blockchain without having to go directly to the blockchain. Instead, we can send our users to the website, which is a lot easier for them to use instead of forcing them to go to the blockchain directly. So we can take advantage of smart contracts. Some advantages are that they're autonomous. So users can trust that all of their processes will happen automatically, all the transactions. Also, your audience can read the smart contracts that you're using because the blockchain is transparent. So if you build a smart contract for your NFT marketplace or for your to-do list, your audience can go read it and check it out to see if it's trustworthy, to see if it will do what the website says it does. Another advantage of using smart contracts is that you can store a history of all of the transactions because the blockchain records every single thing that ever happens. Every time you add a new to-do item, the blockchain will store it. And you can check throughout history of time, the status of the contract and all the transactions that ever occurred. Another advantage of using smart contracts is the inherent encryption in the smart contracts. Because before any transaction is done on a blockchain, it's validated, so it's checked. Is it a fraudulent transaction? There's lots of problems with hacks and identity thefts these days on regular websites. But if you connect to the blockchain decentralized computing, then you can take advantage of the natural cryptographic nature and structure of the blockchain. So those are just a few of the advantages of why we would want to use a smart contract. Lots of companies are starting to implement smart contracts into their website or just into their own software. Because let's say you have a website that is tracking a shipment, but you have a common problem where at some point in the chain, you lose data or commonly packages can be misplaced and never found again. Well, if you have a traditional piece of software, it's easy for data to get lost or for there to be miscommunication. But if you store instead your whole process on the blockchain, it's much easier to keep track of what happened and where was there a break in the chain. 
So there's a lot more transparency and permanence of your data and what happened at what time if you use smart contracts. So that's why these companies are implementing blockchain programmers and Web3 developers to take advantage of these smart contracts. Another example of a DAP is passwordless sign-in. So it's kind of vague. Let me give you an example. Currently on a regular website, if we want to log in or sign up, we'd have to enter our username or perhaps our email and we'd have to make a password. If we forgot our password, we'd have to click forgot my password. We have to go then retrieve the password or reset it over email. There might be two-factor authentication for extra security. So that's on a traditional website, but with a DAP, you can use passwordless sign-in by instead signing in all of your users or whoever wants to over their cryptocurrency wallet instead. So they use their public address to sign in, which is connected to their browser via the popular extension MetaMask, most likely. So they can sign in much faster and without having to have any password because they're just signing in through their wallet. So you can add that as an option to your websites, and this makes it adapt because it is connecting to a cryptocurrency wallet. Another example of a DAP would be data storage or business tracking. So if you have something like you want to store data, it could be typically data that you don't want to lose like historical data. You can tr track that on the blockchain to have more permanence and less data loss. As well as business tracking. So we already mentioned that with tracking shipments is a popular example. And you can just build these smart contracts for all these processes if you'd like and just have to interact with the smart contract directly on the blockchain. But if you're building a product that is more client facing, less internal facing, then you'd want to build some kind of user interface for them. So that is the point of a DAP is to be that user interface, making it easier to connect to the blockchain. Another example of a DAP is a store with cryptocurrency payments. So you might have your traditional online store where users can come and they can buy products. Maybe they pay with their credit card or their PayPal, and then they get their product shipped to them or they get a digital product. So that's a typical website traditionally. If you wanted to add the blockchain layer, you can enable cryptocurrency payments. So users can now pay with their cryptocurrency wallet. Some advantages of that are that it's harder to double spend a cryptocurrency, so it's harder to counterfeit it as well. That's the whole point being that the blockchain is going to track every single cryptocurrency that lives on it. So if a hacker tries to double spend it, the blockchain will prevent that transaction. So hacks and fraudulating transactions are a lot more rare when you have a DAP. Another, another example of a DAP is a cryptocurrency exchange where users can come to your website and they can buy one cryptocurrency in exchange for another or in exchange for fiat. Another example of a DAP would be a trading bot where you're trading assets or tokens on the blockchain, but you're doing it through the website. Another example would be a bank where you can put deposits and get loans for cryptocurrencies. The bank would be living as a smart contract and your website would allow users to interact with that bank through the website. Another example of a DAP common in finance is yield farming, where you put up some of your cryptocurrency and then you can get a reward for doing so, for giving out those loans. Another example would be a DAP for arbitrage. So this would be similar to automated trading or you have a website and it's going to look for small differences in different marketplaces for tokens like a cryptocurrency or an NFT. And it's going to perform automatic trades. So those are just a few examples of DAPs and you can see that DAPs can be used across different industries. We covered NFTs, we covered to-do lists, 
We covered passwordless sign-in, the financial industry, dApps. So dApps are common across different industries, even into games. If you have a game that connects to NFTs, that would be considered a decentralized app because it is a piece of software that's communicating with the blockchain. Even into the music industry, any piece of software can connect to the blockchain. In this course, we're focusing on websites. So we're going to build websites that can connect to smart contracts with the goal being that you can build some of these examples that we have listed here. So that way you can either start your own side business with your own yield farming DAP, or you can build out a portfolio and get hired at either a blockchain startup or a company that is existing with traditional software that's starting to incorporate blockchain programmers to add a blockchain layer. All right, next up, we're going to talk about Web3 because the course is called Web3 DAP Development. So we covered DAPs. Now let's demystify Web3. Web3 refers to the next phase of how websites are built. So back in the 80s, we had Web 1.0. This is where most websites were static and there were few users of these websites, few developers when compared to today. There was little data that was being passed around. But then by 2000, we got into the phase that we're currently in, which is Web 2.0. With this phase, we have increased data that's being passed around on the web. We have a lot more users of the internet. We have a lot more websites, a lot more developers. We also have some issues, though, in Web 2.0, which Web 3.0 attempts to address. These issues you might be able to think of yourself, including having these huge companies that have a large monopoly on different industries and even into politics. So it's hard for a small company to get their foot in the door without being eaten alive or taken over by these large monopolies. Another issue with Web 2.0, we've already mentioned briefly tonight, which is hacks and identity thefts. Emails, passwords being leaked all the time as well as counterfeiting digital currency. If it's not cryptocurrency, it's a lot easier to counterfeit. So hacking is a big issue in Web 2.0. Web 3.0 attempts to address some of these issues. Another issue being that your data is being taken by big monopolies and you don't have control over your data. We have huge centralized entities, these big companies that own a lot of your data and a lot of the web itself. So Web 3.0 attempts to address some of these issues and we are transitioning into this next phase of websites, Web 3.0. The main way currently that these issues are being addressed is with decentralized te technology, the most popular one being the blockchain. So with Web 3.0, we build web applications that can interact with the blockchain. So we build dApps. The goal being to get advantage of the blockchain, get all of those advantages that we already mentioned tonight, like the increased security, transparency, decentralization. You can have organizations that are completely decentralized. So you can have a company where users can vote and propose changes and all the decisions are made via votes instead of via a CEO. So we already covered more benefits of the blockchain, security, transparency, decentralized entities, the automation of these smart contracts, the trust that we can put in the smart contracts because they happen autonomously and they can never be changed. So you can trust that a smart contract will do the transaction as expected. If we don't have something like a smart contract, we have to have other ways to establish trust. And that could be with third parties, like when you make a purchase, you do so via your credit card provider, perhaps, or maybe you go to the bank, you get lawyers involved if you're making a really big purchase to verify that the transaction will be valid on your end and on the seller's end. Because if you don't have something like an autonomous smart contract, you have to establish trust with the buyer and the seller with third parties. Otherwise, how do you trust that the buyer is going to give you 
funds that are not fraudulent? And how do you trust that the seller will give you the product that they promised to give you? So without the blockchain, we have to establish trust by more expensive means with these third parties, as well as like something like a credit card with credit card fees or something like a notary and a bank, lawyers and a bank. However, if we can use smart contracts, then we can trust the intermediary to be the blockchain itself. So this really cuts down on your cost and your time to do transactions. With Web 3.0, we can also take advantage of cryptocurrencies to make transactions so you can have lower fees depending on the blockchain for international transactions. You can also have faster transactions being done with cryptocurrencies. And there's a lot less risk of getting counterfeit money if you're using a cryptocurrency. So those are the reasons that we are transitioning to Web 3.0. And we do this transition by building dApps. So taking a website and incorporating decentralized technology into it. So hence the name of the course, Web3 DAP Development. Web3.js is the library that we're going to use in our course to actually make this connection. So with this library, similar to React, but for a different purpose, we can connect to the blockchain. So we're going to build our websites with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, as well as Web3, which is a JavaScript library that lets us connect to the blockchain. And it's called Web3 because it's part of this phase of transitioning from Internet 2.0 to now Internet 3.0. So we're going to be using this library Web3 in our course. We're still using JavaScript, but we're using the library because it's a set of tools that allows us to connect to the blockchain via JavaScript. So quite a lot of JavaScript in this course. All right, next up, we're going to discuss how would you build a DAP? Some of the steps to building a DAP. This is just one project example. In our course, we're going to build many projects together. So you'll walk away with a whole portfolio, but I'm going to give you an example of the steps that you would take to building a DAP. Step one, you would build a new NPM project. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, and it allows you to manage all of the libraries and tools that your project requires. Then inside of that project, we build a Truffle project. Truffle and Hardhat are two popular DAP management tools. They allow you to manage the whole decentralized part of your website. So NPM, is managing the entire site as a whole, and it's commonly used just for regular websites. But if you want to manage the decentralized layer, you have to use a tool like Truffle or Hardhat. Next up, step three, you would run a local blockchain. This is so that you can test out your project quickly and for free. Then once your project is ready, you can send it to the main blockchain, the public blockchain. Step four is optional building a React DAP. So this is React app. So this is optional because if you're building a simple website, you don't need React. But if you want to build anything that's more complex than just one page or a couple pages, then you will want to use React. So if you are building a more complex DAP, then you will have to build the React side of it, which manages all the user interface components of it, such as the navigation menu, sidebar, different pages and page sections. Next up, you have to build out the main HTML. So if you are not using React, then your HTML will be larger because you'll have to build out all the page elements in HTML. If you're using React, then your HTML will be a lot smaller because you're just putting together reusable components. So the HTML will build out the skeleton of all the DAP elements that you'll have. Will you have a title? Will you have a button? Will you have a grid to show all your products? Step six, you'll have to use Web3.js, the library that we just mentioned, in order to connect to the blockchain. You might connect to a cryptocurrency wallet like MetaMask. You might connect to 
a smart contract on the blockchain that you built or that someone else built or that's public, you might want to build a website that shows all the NFTs available on a certain blockchain. Whatever smart contract you want to connect to, that is what you'll make the connection with is Web3.js. If you want to connect to a cryptocurrency wallet, you also do that with Web3.js. This allows you to accept purchases and transactions. Because if anyone wants to interact with a smart contract to make a change to it, they have to do that via their wallet. So you have to, in your website, enable the wallet connections so that users can make payments with their wallet. And you also have to enable the connection to a smart contract if you are including smart contracts in your website. So this is an example of the steps that you would take to building a DAP. And of course, the steps vary depending on the DAP that you want to make. You know, are you making an NFT marketplace? Are you making a game? Are you making a to-do list? Are you making a trading website? Are you making a website for giving out loans? So it depends on the website that you'll build, but these seven steps are the bird's eye view to how you would build out a DAP from start to finish. And in our course, we're going to build several DAPs together. And you'll see that some of these steps will come up when we do so. So now that we mentioned how to build a DAP, let's talk about the DAPs that we will build together this summer. So I'm going to take you all to the official course webpage. This is where you can read the entire course curriculum for all 10 weeks of our summer course. I also want to mention that our last course sold out, so don't wait until the last minute. If you add two courses, so if you buy two courses at the same time, you get 10% off automatically. If you're looking for a second course, I recommend blockchain programming. It is very closely related to this course. It's all about building smart contracts. The two were designed together in mind. We're also running a Memorial Day sale. So happy Memorial Day, everyone. We are running a sale. You can save 25% with a code MDS22. That's quite a large discount. We normally don't do such a huge discount. So I encourage you all to take advantage. That will be valid until the end of the day on June 2nd. So let's get into the course curriculum. Let's talk about all 10 weeks. So here I am at that link, loomywealth.com, Web3 development using React.js, building websites that can interact with the blockchain. So let's start with week one. We are going to get started with an introduction to web development. We'll introduce all the students together then we'll discuss how web development works in general, kind of like we did tonight. Then we'll get into HTML and CSS fundamentals. So we'll learn how to build a basic site together in week one. So this course is very project heavy. We build a lot of projects together. Next, we start into JavaScript. So we'll learn how to add functionality to our website so that users can interact with the site. So by week one, you'll already have your first site. It will be simple, but that's a great starting place for beginners, especially because a couple of you mentioned that you are new. So by the end of week one, you'll have a hands-on way of learning how to build your first website. In week two, we already get into decentralized apps. So we're going to build a simple website that connects to the blockchain. So I've included here detailed steps of exactly what we're going to do. But as a bird's eye view, we're going to build a website that can talk to a smart contract. We're not going to build the smart contract itself. This will be pre-built. I built it specifically for this project. If you want to build smart contracts yourself, I encourage you to look into our blockchain programming course. In week three, we finish up this DAP project. So we're going to learn along the way how to use very popular Web3 development tools like Truffle, how to understand Solidity, as well as, of course, JavaScript. 
Ethers.js and Web3.js and MetaMask. So a lot of popular tools covered. By the end of week three, we will have our DAP complete. So you'll have your first decentralized app complete by the end of week three. Right in week four, we have a project finale with that decentralized app where we learn how we can enable our user to interact with our website. We'll also learn how to build out a server for that client server communication that I mentioned at the very beginning of the night. So by the end of week four, people can visit our website and they can start to interact with the blockchain through our website. Next, part two, in week five, we will get into web development with React. So in week five, we start to learn how to build more complex websites. For that, we'll have to learn a library like React. So week five and week six, these are dedicated to learning how to build more advanced apps in React. Then in week seven, we learn how to build decentralized apps in React. So here we're using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React, all four, because if you use React, you automatically have to use the previous three as well. React is just a way to organize the complexity of a site. So we're going to be using React as well as Web3. So we'll actually build two dApps together where we're using React this time, not just HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript, but React as well. So we'll be able to build more complicated dApps at this stage. In week eight, we build an NFT minting dApp. So with this dApp, we're going to build it from scratch with React. So we start with nothing and we go together step-by-step step building this project. We're going to build out the user interface for how the website should look in React. So there should be a button that allows a user to mint. The user should be able to see all the NFTs that they have minted, all the NFTs that they own. They should be able to see all the NFTs that everyone owns for that NFT type, that smart contract. So by the end, we'll have an NFT minting dApp. In week nine, we'll learn how to build a to-do list dApp with Truffle and React. So again, we're going to build out the user interface in React, and we're going to connect to a smart contract that can store data about the to-do list items and that can update that data. So if I want to add a new to-do list item to the blockchain, if I want to mark an item as complete on the blockchain, I can do all that via my website. So again, we'll build that together from scratch. Then in week 10, we cover Metaplex Candy due to popular demand. Metaplex Candy allows you to build NFT minting dApps very quickly to the Solana blockchain. So with our previous contracts, we're going to be connecting to Ethereum, the most popular blockchain for decentralized apps. In week 10, we also cover Solana due to popular demand. We'll also talk about where you can go from here because week 10 is the final week. So we'll tell you what more projects you can build, give you some project suggestions, project outlines. We'll give you some resume tips and interview tips, how to get ready for the coding interview if you do want to apply for a Web3 developer job. So those are the 10 weeks of this supersized course. Most of our courses are eight weeks, but this course is special, supersized by two extra weeks. Next up, let's talk about the three plans that we have available for this course. We have the self-directed plan, the live classes plan, and the project help or tutoring plan. We do have payment plans available. If you don't want to pay all at once, we have three month payment plans and five month payment plans, which you can see automatically when you add an item to your cart. And then you go to the next step, you'll be able to see that the payment plan will be automatically an option if you want to add it. So let's talk about these three plans. The first plan is the self-directed plan. With this plan, you're going through our course on your own. So you get lifetime access to our entire video library. This includes all the past videos, the present videos, and the future videos. So you actually get all semesters 
this is quite unique because even at a university course, they will only give you your current semester. They won't give you any previous or future semesters. So we're unique at LumiWealth here for that. And you also get lifetime access to the code. So for each project, we provide the source code behind the project. So you'll get access to all of the code. You also get access to the community and to instructor support, as well as weekly discussion hour. With the next plan, we have live classes. So with this plan, you get everything from the self-directed plan, but you also get 10 weeks of live classes. So you can watch our library live because every semester we do new live classes. And we meet for two hours every week on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern. So you'll be able to watch along, ask questions throughout the entire night and after the night, and get to know your fellow students. You also get six hours of dedicated live Q&A, access to all future semesters and code. You also get help with two personal projects if you have some dApps in mind that you want to build. We help with resume and interview preparation if you do want to apply for a Web3 developer job. And we have unlimited email and chat Q&A if you have any questions as you're going through the course. Our final plan option is project help or tutoring. So if you have a project that you need help building, or if you just want to get extra one-on-one -on -one tutoring, this is the plan for you. With this one, you get everything from the self-directed plans and the live plans, so you still get to watch live. You also get help with building a custom project, including software development if needed by our team. So if you have a DAP in mind that you maybe want to start a side business or an entrepreneurship endeavor, we'd be happy to help you with building out that project. If you don't have a project in mind, you just want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, then also choose this plan because it comes with 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one video or phone sessions or software development time from our experts. So our team can help you build out your project or you can get extra help every single week with going through the curriculum, going through preparation of pro projects or preparing for the interview. So these are our three payment options. You can select one of these options and then go to your cart. So the cart is at the top right-hand corner of the LumiWealth site. You can also select courses directly from the cart. We have a few suggested options here, like Web3 Development. You can add that to your cart. If you select two or more items at once, then you can add more items to your cart to get that discount. So if you do select two or more items, you'll automatically get 10% off. So I can choose another course here from the recommended courses, and you'll see you'll have a 10% off discount automatically. Right, so you can also take advantage of our Memorial Day sale with the coupon code MDS22. So I'm going to type that in here and then apply that coupon. And this will automatically give you 25% off. So that's quite a large discount. This coupon will expire on June 2nd, end of the day. So I encourage you all to take advantage of this 25% off. All right, so then you can go back to the course at any time or proceed to checkout. If you proceed to checkout, you can see the payment plans. So here, if you would like to pay with a payment plan, you can just check that on and you can select a three month payment plan or a five month payment plan. So you don't have to pay all at once. We do have payment plans available. If you need an invoice, for example, if your company gives you professional development reimbursements, we do provide invoices. So feel free to inquire if you do need an invoice. We'd be happy to provide it for you, commonly for employer reimbursement. Our upcoming class is going to begin June 8th, so it starts very soon. Registration closes on June 1st, so that is just in a couple of days. So I encourage you all, if you do want to join my summer semester, to enroll quickly. The course begins on Wednesday, June 8th, and lasts for 10 weeks. We do have a two-week break at the halfway point, so you can catch up on projects and take your time with the first five weeks before we jump into the last five weeks. 
the effort is about eight to 12 hours per week, but it depends on your course goals. If you want to just watch along every single week, that's totally fine. You can watch along. If you have large goals, like you want to get hired or you want to build out a project, then we do recommend putting in more effort each week to try out the optional homework, try out the suggested projects, to read over the curriculum for that week, the course materials for that week, to rewatch the live class for that week. So it depends on how much you want to get out of the course, then you'll require more effort. We meet every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific for two hours per week live over Zoom. We will have a fall semester as well in September. So if you are interested in joining in the fall, that course will begin on September 7th, 2022. Again, lasting 10 weeks. And again, same thing, about 8 to 12 hours per week every Wednesday. There's an early bird special for that fall semester. You won't save 25% with Memorial Day, but you will be able to save 20% if you want to buy any time for July 31st. Jeremy's also asking if there's any way to ask more questions in private. Yes, you can email our team at alicia at loomywealth.com. Feel free to email our primary contact, Alicia, with this email that I've provided. You can also book a call with us at any time on our website. Let's see, we have here at the bottom of our page, book a call. This will take you to the book a call page where you can select a time that's available in the calendar. We have some spots available, let's see, next month in June. Okay, so June 1st, we have some spots available if you would like to book a call. I'll drop a link to that as well. We are also available on Discord in our Discord community. You can find us and direct message us on Discord. Any way that you are most comfortable, either Circle, which is more public, or Discord, where you can make a public post or send a private DM. Any of these ways you can reach us. Okay, glad to hear that will work. Jeremy, feel free to ask any more questions that you may have. So yes, again, you can book a call with us at any time if you have any questions that you want to discuss in depth. And a reminder, we have the summer semester beginning on June 8th, so very shortly, about a week and a half. And we also have the fall semester beginning September 10th. So I hope to see you in my summer semester starting very soon because, again, you can take advantage of our discount code. All right, so that is the course curriculum. Thank you everyone for making it to the end of tonight's webinar. You now know what is a DAP, what is web development, what is Web3, and how would you go about building a DAP? Don't worry if you didn't understand everything tonight because we will cover everything in depth in our course and we build out projects, which is the best way to learn in our course as well. If you have any further questions now, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about web development or decentralized apps, smart contracts, Web3, or the course curriculum, like what we cover each week, or any of the more practical questions, like about payment plans. Feel free to ask away. I'd be happy to stick around tonight. If anyone wants a link to these slides again, I'll drop them again. Otherwise, everyone is free to go if, unless you have any further questions. If you'd like to rewatch this webinar, we will be posting it on our YouTube channel. So I encourage you all to subscribe. We'll post this webinar here for free on the Lumi Wealth channel. You can just search for Lumi Wealth on YouTube. If you're interested in the smart contract side of the blockchain space, I encourage you to check out our blockchain programming course. Blockchain programming was designed alongside our Web3 course. So these two actually work perfectly together if you want to take both because blockchain programming is all about the smart contracts and then Web3 is all about the decentralized apps. So these two are meant to be taken one after the other. 
So if anyone would like to inquire about blockchain programming, feel free to ask away as well. I am the instructor of blockchain programming, so I'd be happy to answer any questions about that as well. It follows all the same course plans, self-directed live classes, project help or tutoring. However, it is only eight weeks, so not super, super sized. And it begins in the summer semester on Thursdays, so right after Web3 begins. Web3 runs on Wednesdays and blockchain programming runs on Thursdays. And we will have a fall semester for blockchain programming as well. All right, thank you everyone for joining me. If there are no further questions, then I will hope to see you active in our circle community or our Discord community, or via email, you can message us any questions that you might have. And I hope to see all of you in June in Web3. Thank you, everyone, and I will see you next time.